The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar on Reckon One Payroll. My name is Corey Anderson. I am a customer success training consultant with Reckon. Now, just a little bit of housekeeping before we do get underway. I know a number of you have already uh, been on a webinar before um, with us, but if you're unfamiliar with the GoToMeeting thing, uh, today we're just using the computer audio. We're not going to be using uh, you guys talking. You'll only hear me. Um, so if you want to have any troubles, um, with the sound, just pop it into the questions box and I'll, I'll monitor that as we go through. Uh, because we are just using the audio side, if you have any questions, pop them into the questions box and I'll answer those at the end unless there's something that uh, comes up that's really um, pressing in there and I'll, I'll look at it as we go through. And of course, if that panel's in your way on the screen, just click the little arrow and it's going to disappear off the screen for you as well too. So, uh, Is that better now? Hopefully that's come back. Just pop in the box. Excellent. Sorry, guys. One of those joys of technology. I'm, <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure where we lost on there, but yeah, $3 a month for the unlimited payroll there for employees and that. So what we'll do, we'll just jump in and we'll start uh, running through everything in here. Okay. Now, I'm just going to go into Reckon One that I've already got open, and I've got a number of subscriptions already here. Now, if you want to add it on, I've already got it added on to mine. You just go to the dots, go to settings, and then we can go to customize your Reckon One modules. This is where we can pick up the payroll. We have a light and a medium version. So there's two versions of the payroll, both unlimited employees, and but different things that we can do. So the big, big difference between those is just on the SuperStream side, whether you're just using the SAF file on the $3 a month one, or you want to use one of our uh, the payment gateway of OzEddy to submit that payment um, to the clearinghouse. Majority of our users are using just the light because it does everything they need to do. It's compliant with, with single touch payroll and super stream as well. So once you've picked that up, I've already got it turned on in this one. It's just a matter of clicking through next, paying for it. Now, the best part is because it is a monthly payment, you can chop and change as you need to uh, within there as well too. And we're going to store that data for seven years, even if you do uh, decide to turn it off at some stage. Okay, so once we've got it activated, I'm going to go into my book that we're using today, my good old Smash Davo Cafe. Now, just going to have a look at some of the settings here. So under the payroll side, we do have a payroll setup, so we can access it from within there, or we can go up to the administration menu and go to settings. I'll start with the payroll setup one just so we can see what what that looks like there. So it gives you just some necessary details to use the payroll area. So we've got the payroll accounts and then we've got pay items. So with the payroll accounts, it's 
how I'm using the PAYG withholding, what bank accounts all the payments are coming from as well too. If you go to the advance, this is where you've got things like the legal contact, a little bit more payroll setup information there on optional password for pay slips and payment summaries, for example. Um, further information on accounts like expense accounts. So this one here shouldn't be sundry expenses, should actually be my wages and salaries account. Any rounding um, and also automatic payroll payments. So once you finish the pay run, you can go to the payments area of the banking and run an ABA file for payment of the employees. I'm just going to click save on that. If I go to the pay items area, this shows me all of the pay items by default, but it also breaks it down into menus. Say for example, leave, earnings, any allowances and so forth as we go through. So let's have a look at the leave to start with. So there's just one thing in here. Now, by default on annual leave, leave loading is turned on. So this is book we've used a few times. So it'll have the 17.5% in there. So just be wary of that. If you don't need to have leave loading on there, delete it out of there and it won't be applicable. Of course, you can create another pay item if you need a mix of leave loading, non-leave loading between employees uh, by just clicking on add and then just choosing the type that you want to create this leave item for, say annual, you might call it annual leave LL for example, um, and just go through and complete the boxes as required. You'll notice there's also a tick box for show leave balance on the pay slip. So if the leave balances, because annual leave and sick leave aren't required by law to be shown on a pay slip, um, employers always show annual leave. Some employers don't like to show the personal leave sick or sick leave on a pay slip. So if you don't want that to show, you can untick that box and that won't appear. Okay, so we've gone into the leave area. So when I've gone into the leave area, this has actually taken me into that settings area from the main screen. And so if I want to go into the other leave and look at those, I can come to uh, settings and leave, follow that breadcrumb trail, or I can go back to the payroll on the left and the setup from within there. Now, I was meant to click on pay items, not leave. So let's go to pay items. This is where all the items are sitting there. So um, any salaries, super guarantee, salary sacrifice for super, any other sell sack in there as well too. That's all catered for um, within here. Now, a lot of the leave items, a lot of the pay items are created by default, so you're not having to go and set them all up yourself. You're just, they're there, ready to go for you. Take, for example, the super guarantee. One of the things that you will need to do on that is uh, specify the expense account, but also the items that are included in the calculation for super guarantee. So I've ticked salary, annual leave, personal leave, and tick anything else that needs to apply to the employees. Um, the default rate, we will change that as, as need be by legislation if there's any changes on that. And the minimums of 450 and, um, and that sort of thing, it's all hard coded in the background. So we don't need to fill those in. Um, they're just there for other, uh, if there's any other differences um, with the minimums and that, that you might have. You, um, now, easy enough to create other pay items if required as well too. Uh, just clicking on add and it chooses that an earnings, allowance, deductions, reimbursement, super company contribution. And if it's an earnings, you can choose the type that it is, overtime variable termination uh, and so forth. So um, choosing whether there's tax applicable or not. So we can work our way through all of the, the pay items there. Just going back to the settings side. One thing I didn't mention is just under the general, that's the same thing as we looked at just before with the um, the legal contact and all of that for the payroll side. 
Going to move over to the pay schedules next. So pay schedules, uh, I liken them to creating buckets for the employees. So I've got a cafe here. So we've got different types of staff. We've got kitchen staff. You're going to have floor staff. You might have the owners as well. So I can create buckets to put these in or pay schedules to put the employees into. So then when it comes to pay time and payroll time, um, I can go in and I can go, okay, I want to pay all my wait staff. I want to pay all the kitchen staff. And all the staff that are assigned to that, that schedule are then automatically pulled up within there. So you can see if I click down there, I've already got an employee created and set up within there. So I'm not having to go and add employees to pay runs and that. They're already in the schedule and it makes life a lot easier for me. You might also just have one pay schedule called employees as well. So even that still streamlines and makes it more efficient that you're not grabbing them all. But you might have staff that are paid fortnightly, but they're paid alternate fortnights for cash flow purposes. So I might pay my kitchen staff this fortnight, but and so this week is pay week for them, but next week is the fortnightly pay run for my wait staff. So it just means I'm I'm paying out each week, but I'm not paying out a big chunk every fortnight. So I'm just evening up a little bit. So if I want to add a pay schedule, just clicking on the add, give it a name, choose whether it's weekly, fortnightly or monthly, whether, when you want it to start and the end date and also the first payment date. So that might be on the end date, might be the day after the end date, depends on the type of employees and the way their remuneration is set up. Okay, so after we've done the pay schedules, we have the year-to-date setup. Now, year-to-date setup, I'm actually going to come back to a little bit later on because doing the year-to-date setup, you, before you can actually use that, you need to have the super fund set up and the employee set up So, because information needs to be put against an employee or a super fund. Let's go to SuperStream services uh, next of all. So I haven't got a super stream service selected. And, but if you're wanting to use Oz Eddy, uh, that's a, the one we've used for the gateways for sending that information automatically. As I say, a lot of people do use a SAF file instead. Um, I'm just going to turn that off. Now, I mentioned we need to set up employees and we also need to set up our super funds before we can do year to date. I do recommend setting up the employees before we actually set up the, uh, sorry, set up the super funds before the employees. So let's go to payroll and let's go down to super funds. I've got one already in here um, that I've created. So let's just go add and we just give it a name. I'm actually going to set this one up as a, um, self-managed super fund just so we can see the difference between them so the best part about contacts within reckon one you might have all heard this before um, a customer a contact can be a customer supplier and super fund or if they're an individual a customer supplier employee all on one card so i'm not having to create separate cards uh, once i've created that let's go save and what save does just opens up a couple of other tabs for me First one is going to be the bank details, and that's where I need to complete the bank details for the, the super fund for payments. And then I move to the super funds tab. Oops, I forgot my zeros. Now, you've got the choice here whether it's an APRA fund or SMSF. If it is an APRA fund, you're just picking up the fund name. So if we use the AMP one before, uh, pick up AMP, put in the number, then all the USIs appear down here. When we're actually on the employee, that is when we're actually going to choose which product they actually use from within there. But as this is an SMSF, uh, the fund name comes up and just need to put in the uh, ASA in there as well too. 
And if the fund is not listed, click on the link, name, ABN, and they're the things that we do need. You can add the USI if required, and we will endeavour to get that um, added as soon as possible. Our listing does come from the ATO, um, so any changes, we will we'll get it updated as soon as possible for you. So my super fund's created, and if I want need to edit a super fund at any time, just click on the super fund, and then I can come in here and do anything that I that I need to as well. Make any changes, adjustments. Um, as Let's go to the employee section now. So click on employees. I've got Kate that I've already created. Let's just go have a look at what I've already done in Kate. Because um, the employee side is a fairly comprehensive. Now, when I first add the contact, the only the general tab here is appearing. The other five tabs don't appear until you actually click save. This employee username is a, not a requirement unless they're using uh, timesheets or expense claims. So it's if they're going to be logging the system to do those things. So just for normal payroll, you don't need to have an employee username there. It can be left blank. So it can come through, complete the information. Uh, that we need to. So let's just put Kate's email address in. Okay. Postal address is all there. And this information does all need to be completed for single touch payroll purposes. Uh, clicking on the personal tab, date of birth, um, marital status. Now the default send, which isn't a requirement of course, and uh, default send method is via email for the pay slips and payment summaries. The email is pre-filled and a password is put in there. So just it can be just a generic password that the employee would need to see their payroll officer and say, right, let's make my password um, souffle, for example, and it needs to go in there. No, uh, no big drama if the payroll officer is knowing that password because they know everything else about the payroll side. So fairly um, something the employee uh, is comfortable with the password there. Complete any other details, primary, emer primary emergency contact, secondary emergency contact as well too. And then we go over to the uh, employment tab. Now, where's single touch payroll? Now, of course, single touch payroll uh, is at the moment only employ applying for those employers that have more than 20 employees. Um, but it is something that's working through its legis through the legislation of, of the government and that, that that's from 1 July next year that is going to apply to anyone with under 20 employees as well. Now, mandatory, whether they're full-time, part-time, um, casual, contractors, so forth. Uh, the awards, it's awards are here just so you can pull them up in the classification just to assign them, but it's not actually going to be pulling through the award rates and that at this point in time. So just be aware of that. Pay frequency, fortnightly, weekly, monthly, and the pay schedule. So kitchen's there and the standard hours a week she works. Uh, just to the right of that, we've got job details, title, uh, manager, any job description if you want to add those in as well. We've got a hire date, so important, when that person was hired, long service leave date as well, um, if there's when that's going to can be taken from or when they're starting to take it. Termination date, if you do add a termination date in there, it does actually ask you the reason for termination, and if you want to go and do their pay run straight away. Now, then we've got the payments here. So, and the payments section is just the bank account that they want that paid into. And you can have multiple bank accounts and do a percentage split, dollar split on that as well. Let's move over to the tax tab. Tax file number, state, residency, um, so resident, non-foreign resident, or if they're, what tax scale that they're actually um, applying on there. And of course, if we are choosing foreign resident, we have catered for the seasonal worker program as well too. 
any extra tax, a dollar amount or percentage amount that someone might like withheld, um, any help debts, student loans, um, financial supplement schemes as well too, Medicare levies. So we can cater for, have all of that information in there. The leave tab is important. Now the leave tab also relates back to the higher date because this is when leave first starts and calculates from. So we're gonna add in, I've added already in the annual leave, personal leave, it's put in the annual entitlement per pay, so forth and pay on termination. The next cool part down here is once I have year to date balances put in and I've already got them in and we'll go back and have a look at that in a moment, is I can then do a leave projection. So with it not being too far away, only a couple of months away, scary thought that, how much leave is Kate gonna have for Christmas? So just based on where, where she's at at the moment, what's going to accrue, 125 hours of leave will be there at the end of at come Christmas time. And finally, the pay setup tab. So the pay setup is where you put in their earnings or salary, or if they're on hourly rate, you'd use ordinary, um, any allowances, any deductions, and then super guarantee. Now, if they are using salary sacrifice, it is a deduction, but it goes under the superannuation accounts area. And if you do have a, a mess up with a line that you don't require, like the one I've just done, in any way, you just see to the right, you've got this little cross, click that and it appears. So you can see from this AMP one here that I can choose the um, type of product that they've got for their superannuation and adjust the join date back to, if, they, if it's a fund they've come over with, it's just they make that join date when they um, join the um, your organisation the same as the um, hire date. And when we're happy with that, we can save and close. So that's how I do the employee. So you can see why I like to have the super fund set up first because I'm pulling it from that uh, information. If it's not if there's not set up, I don't have access to that. Just going to go back into the settings area. I promised you that I'd go and have a look at the dates part. And the best part is we're actually all pretty well done after this with the setup. So now we can go and uh, actually see how a pay run works. So adding pays in here, so payment summary, leave, tax and so forth. So it's just a matter of clicking add pays and just add a row who the employee is, Kate whether it was for where is she up to, so it might be just the salary, at what point in time and how much she'd been paid. We need to then also do the same for the superannuation. Superannuation side. If I pull up the super guarantee, I choose my product here as well too from the from the drop down list. So they're all available in here. So grab the one that's required, um, and this is the this is the product list. So it is a lot more comprehensive than that one we saw. It's not the fund name. This is the underlying products, which is why I've got, say for example, a number of AMP uh, products within here. Again, the pay period date. One little quirk with the uh, super guarantee. All right, let me just get this thing working properly and I can show you. That one will do. Super guarantees need to be entered in um, as a negative item um, in there. So, it's just a way a quirk. It's been um, why it's been coded all in the background. But just say so, super guarantee needs to be entered in as a negative. Now, if I'm entering any pays or uh, sorry leave, I'll click on one that's already created. So you can see leave item as that date quantity that was there. And so we just work our way through each of the items there. So tax balances, payment summaries, and that sort of thing. 
Now that's done, let's go and do a pay run. Exciting, I know. Um, I've got a couple already in here. You'll note there, draft posted paid. I can filter and sort, or I can click on any of these headers to, to sort, or I can click on the little filter, of course, to filter if I'm looking for something when I've got a long page. Just remember, we've got the show 10 roses by default, and you might have one of three pages. So you can alter that to 100 rows if need be. So if you are looking for something, have a look at that part. So I've got a couple already finalized. Um, and next to the ad, we can also hide and show columns. But let's click on add. And we've got a couple of different ways we can do the pay run. So we've got unscheduled by default. So unscheduled is I don't have the buckets that we're using and I'd have to manually go and add my employees in and then complete the pay run. Load all their, their, all their pay information will load. Now, we can then do a, kit, a scheduled run, so it pre-fills my dates already. Now, one little great thing about the unscheduled ones, you can actually run an unscheduled for the same time period as a scheduled pay run. So you might want to do it is, what if um, everything, I gave everyone a Christmas bonus, how would that look sort of thing. So you can do these things to have a bit of a play around with it. Just remember, if you, the one you don't use, to delete it as well do. So I've told that to create the scheduled pay run. It's now sitting at draft. Let's click on that there. And we can see one employee, if there's multiple employees, they're all going to list down, and it gives me a total of all of them at the bottom there. I can then, if I wanted to, if I'm happy with that, I can just finish the pay run. I can email the pay slips in bulk. Uh, if I needed to, or I can click into Kate and there's a salary there. I can add, uh, if she took some annual leave, I can add that in as well. Um, I can add any other allowances or deductions. The super guarantee is showing down there as well too. But something that you can do as well is if you need to, you can override the tax amount as well too. So if I want to make this one just say 850 just for this period, I can do that as well too. So it does, does give you that little bit of flexibility. So let's just go back. I can print the pay slip. They look like a standard everyday pay slip. Now the, the, the email on the other one um, sends them by bulk. There is no bulk printing of pay slips because we want to be environmentally friendly as well. So so my pay slip sitting there. So if I follow this breadcrumb trail just back, I can then finish the pay run. And that's all locked and loaded in. So then I can email the pay slips as I say, go to bank payments, opens the bank payments in another tab, or I can open reports, which will open in another tab too. Let's stick with bank payments for the moment. So this is a creation of ABA files. Click on add bank account that's to come out of. And then I can add a reference in there. Add a payment item. So I can pick up Kate Wilkins there. And you'll notice that it's not just exclusively about paying wages. You can also pay uh, normal bills as well too using that same ABA file. I'll select Kate for just for the moment. Happy with that. And I can just generate the file. And what that's going to do is it's going to process that, generate the ABA file. It's downloaded for me to upload to internet banking. You can edit it if need be, view the history, re-download the file as well too. Now what's happened in the reporting side, if I go to the reports, I've got some payroll reports in here. Payroll summary, payroll detail, 
transaction summary, pay schedules, leave balances, so a whole range of reports. Let's just have a look at the payroll summary report. One thing I do love about Reckon One is no matter where I am, so I might just be in budget, I could be just doing um, opening up an invoice, I can always, and even generating a report, I can right click and open a link in a new tab or a new window. So even the generation of a report, I can tell that to go and generate that in another window because I'm actually wanting to go and look at a couple of reports. So this is my uh, payroll, I'm just gonna change this to this financial year. So we can see that summary, in com the complete summary. Um, and Kate Wilkins, so I can see the total that she's been paid throughout the year. And payroll detail report, let's just change that over to this financial year as well. Click on refresh. These reports can of course be exported to PDF, CSV, XLSS, X or RTF as well too. Salary. So this one's just breaking it down between each of those different pay runs. So it's just giving you the what's in each of those, um, that individual detail. Now, if you undo a pay run, I can easily undo a pay run. And what that does is it confirms that. So what it'll do, it'll delete the entries, payments, everything associated with, and then you'd need to do it again. So um, we can do that easily under the pay runs and then you just go through, recreate it again as required. Okay, let's have a look at SuperStream. Just working my way down on, on the list on this side here. So SuperStream, I've got one in draft already, but if I wanna add a brand new one, just click on add from and to. So we're doing this for July, for example, July. Oops, that shouldn't be that. Let's just change that date. Done. Add the super stream batch. It's going to pull up all the um, super super payments and employees for the month in question. There we go. Kate Wilkins, and it's pulling up the two of those in there. I can preview that. I can create the SAF file to download. So I just click on SAF. It's going to create that. It will automatically download just to the default download directory through your browser. I can mark it as lodged. And if I had the gateway turned on, I can lodge via gateway as well too. So that's at OZD. Now, single touch payroll. So you can see now that single, this has all been completed, my information has gone through for my employees. And I can click onto one of those um, batches, I suppose. And it's going to list my employees there. And if this is an update, I tick that box. And then I can send to GovConnect STP. So with STP for uh, Reckon, we've created a separate program within the portal. So if I just go back to the portal, you'll see under my products, we've got Reckon Gov Connect. That's what's connecting to the ATO for the lodgement. Cause we've got four products that need to lodge single touch payroll. We created a separate product for that. So with the um, single touch payroll within this one in particular, I click on send to Gov Connect STP and that will fire that over. I was looking at this just before we started this. I was trying to get this to work. Um, and I've just, I've, I haven't got mine to work fully for you, but I do have a backup. So send the full file replacement. So if you have made a big error in there, you can send a full file replacement to the ATO or just an update and mark it as sent as well too. But what happens if I just go into my uh, slideshows in here, just so you can see. So we're at this screen within there. Once you've actually sent it over, it says you've successfully sent that pay data to the GovConnect STP portal and you can launch it from in there and review that. So let's go to single touch payroll. If we go and click on GovConnect. Now the first time that we go in there, you will be prompted to um, 
log in with a multi-factor authenticator. So it is a, an app that's downloaded onto your phone. So iPhone, Android phone, there is also an extension for the Chrome browser. And off the Play Store or um, App Store, click on the authenticator, scan that barcode, and it'll then lock your phone to this instance and email address on there, then enter in that, that code. And so therefore, each time you go in, uh, you'll just see the please enter your MFA code, open up the app, put in the code, and that's a repeating code. It's like the old tokens we used to get from the banks, um, and then you're in there. It's a once-off verification per session. So this is why mine went in automatically when I clicked on it, because I'd been in here before I started this webinar. But if I signed out and went back in, it's going to um, require me to open that again. Now, when I click on open, it's going to open up single touch payroll. And if there's data received, it's going to show that there is data received in there. I'll come back to the, the slideshow in a moment just to show you what's available in there. Company and advisor information. So I can then add my a bookkeeper or accountant, if they're submitting on my behalf, I can add that information in there as well too. Software ID that is required for the um, portal, business portal, the ATO portal, uh, is appearing in this area as well too. So what happens with the single touch payroll? So here I am on this screen. So we've already launched it. The very first time you actually create that tile, so if we're at this, sorry, I went one too far there, uh, get started, click get started, and you create that instance of the STP. It's one instance per ABN as well too. So if you've got payroll for two, three ABNs, you'd need to create more. And as a bookkeeper, uh, you can share them with your end users and third parties like the accountant, and the if an end user's created, they can share it with you as well too. Put in the ABN, it validates with the ABR, which is why I've gone floating around called Bunnings Group, um, because it needs a valid ABN in there. Um, and everything must match between the systems, as you saw the error I got up. Click Submit, it verifies, and then I can open that up at any time. When I click Open, I've got all the products that we have in um, single touch turned on, but as you saw on that previous screen, I would only need to see that Reckon 1 one if I'm just using Reckon 1. You can see that information then comes through automatically down the bottom there from Reckon 1, the pay date, the number of employees, and uh, is it an update event? No, any other detail. And if you're happy with that, because you're doing that bit of a review there, you can click Submit from that button. Otherwise, you can click on the detail, and it's going to show you the list of employees that make that up. So I only have one, but that figure might have been 23,000 made up from four employees, for example. So I can then still submit all from this um, screen, or I've even got a further detail where I can actually see that complete detail for my employee as well too. So it is a very, very comprehensive um, overview of everything that's happening and that you're about to submit for STP with the ATO. So when we hit that submit all, it verifies. So we've got a couple of ways. If you're there, if you're the end users of the business, that you've got the um, authorization, the declarative thing that you're sending um, is true and correct to the ATO, click on confirm. And then you'll receive a status from the ATO. Um, it's going to be pending, or it could be submitted, or it could be processed uh, as well too. It's successfully submitted. They've just got to process that as well too. So much like the buses, you submit them, but they don't actually process them um, for a little while, especially when it's busy. It can take a bit of time. So that uh, information is always going to appear there, so you can look at that. Now. If you're submitting, um, when you go back to Reckon 1 and uh, under the on the main screen, it's going to tell you that the status is submitted and you can always look at the detail for more information. So I had a look at the company and advisor info before um, as well. Now, if you are submitting on behalf of a client, there's a declaration is, is worded a little bit differently that you've got the um, 
authority from the business owner to submit on their behalf. If you do want to know anything around STP for Reckon, go to kb.reckon.com.au, put in STP in the search, and a lot of this information that we've been through will also come up within there. Okay, so back into the, where am I? This one here. So back into this side. So we've done the single touch payroll side. And of course, the last thing, of course, is we have the uh, payment summaries. So not something we need to worry about for a little while yet. And of course, if you go on to single touch payroll, they become a thing of the past as well too, which is just brilliant time saver there. So payment summaries, click on add. The year that I want to do that for, I'm going to do this in the year past year because I know I've got a, a payroll payment in there, only a small little one. Uh, it's created. When I click on that, I can see my employee, how it's going to be sent. And so then I can just print off, or sorry, email off the uh, payment summaries to Kate and for her and do that for each of the employees. So that's just creating the payment summary. So the other side of that is we do have the ETP payment summaries as well too. Uh, so they can be created um, if you're doing any ETPs. But the payment summary annual reports, otherwise known as the old MDUP file. So when I click on add, the year that you want that to relate to, any description, it's not an amendment, add the report. What will happen when I click Add Report, you'll see it's created the empty file automatically down in the bottom corner for me. And I can then submit that onto the ATO portal um, from there. And I, so if I drill into that, I can drill into that to see what makes up um, the annual report and I can mark that as Lodge 2 so it changes off the draft status. So that's how I then submit all my um, uh, payment payroll payment summary details as well within there. Now something else that of course now that now what we've gone through and that, that's basically everything that we need to have a look at on the payroll side. Let's go back to the dashboard for a moment. So what we can see on here is I've got customized dashboard down in the bottom right hand corner. When I click on that, let's click on the payroll widget. So the payroll widget just shows a, a, shows a checklist and links to frequent, you, you frequently used payroll items. So that's going to appear here. Now when you first go in there, the payroll checklist, um, if you've never used payroll before and you're doing the setup, the checklist can actually be quite handy. So if, for example, this configure payroll settings, if you click on that link, it takes you through to that area Um, it opens that up, gives you information what that is, and shows you where to go by clicking on that um, payroll settings general. So it takes you to that area, so you can work your way through that list. I'll just go back to the dashboard, back to the payroll side. Now, there's also some getting started payroll videos, so you can have a watch of those as well. It takes you on to uh, the help area for that for um, the payroll videos. And working through that checklist just shows you what you have and haven't done. When you are finished with that, you can click hide checklist and it becomes a standard widget for um, payroll. So you can go a short link to employees, you want to run your pay runs, you want to do the payroll uh, payments as well. Now, the other thing just I should actually mention just relating to payroll, just go back into the settings area here. When it comes to doing the BAS, if I go into the BAS details area under tax settings, I want to make sure that I've got PAYG tax withheld ticked um, within there as well. So when I've done that, so when I come down to the tax area and I go to run my BAS, and I add that BAS, I'll just bring up one that I've already got in there. You can add the document IDs and all of that as well too. When I've got that there, it's going to pull up, because um, that one's already created. Um, I'll do a new one actually. 
add one here. Let's go for this quarter just finished, document ID. You'll see that's pulled through my POYG tax withheld uh, here for the for the period. So when that's marked as lodged and submitted, it's all going to be um, go through with all the withholding tax on there. Okay. Which one am I at? This one. Okay. So this webinar today has been recorded. Um, it's going to be uploaded onto the website. You can go to reckon, uh, go dot reckon dot com training, and you can access recorded video webinars and workbooks. The Training Academy also a great resource as well. So these are all in there. Um, if you want to do any um, download any of the manuals and that around payroll, you can jump onto the academy. Uh, free to sign up to. So the webinars, you can do face-to-face -face courses, the how-to videos, any training events, workbooks, um, and uh, other resources within there. Now, that's accessed under more and training. But I want to say thank you for attending today. I'm going to open it all up to questions now. So if you do have any questions, pop them into the questions box and uh, I'll answer them as we go through. Uh, but do thank you for attending and look forward to seeing you guys at another one. But um, I'll hang around for a few moments, a little while, and we'll have a look to see if any questions come through and I'll answer those. Thank you. So it doesn't look like I've got any questions coming through at the moment, so um, I will hang around for a little bit longer just if anything has, does come through. But if you do uh, have any questions that come up later, just go to email us at training at reckon .com, uh, or give us a call and we can help you out there as well too. But uh, thank you for attending. I'll give it another uh, minute and just see if anything comes through. Otherwise, I'll end the webinar and let everyone go and have some lunch and enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Okay, I'm going to end the webinar now, but thank you for attending and enjoy your day and we'll speak to you soon. Any questions to training at reckon.com. Thank you very much.